Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his, his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany is from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah writes, Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth as empty. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This February, we join with the second commandment, and it's me. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name, but call upon him in every trouble, pray praise, and give thanks. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, the ninth chapter. St. Paul writes, If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some, 
I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel.
Please be seated for our sermon hymn.
the man possessed by the unclean spirit did. The unclean spirit knew who Jesus was and why he had come. He knew that Jesus had come to preach the word that would make all things new. And to make the man clean, the king had come to cast the demon out with his very word. So after that Sabbath day service was over, the king and his disciples went to the home of Andrew and Peter, along with John and James, St. Mark tells us. And on arrival at the home, they find the mother-in-law of Peter laid up with illness. Immediately they tell Jesus. It's not uncommon. In fact, we love to talk about the sick. Each Sunday I hear you sharing new information about a friend who has become ill or someone who has recovered from some type of illness. The disciples are no different. But when they speak to the king, they are actually talking to the one who can make a difference. And so Jesus immediately goes to her, takes her by the hand, and raises her up. And immediately, she begins to wait on them. I know, I know, Keith could probably come up with all sorts of little quips and jokes about Peter's mother-in-law and how easy it would be for her to immediately go and start serving them. Why is this poor woman immediately after being made well, given to care for this group of visitors in her son-in-law's home. Do you think that they'd be taking care of her? To answer this question, I think we have to take a moment and think about sickness just a little bit. Because chaos here has been unlike any that we've seen. And for a moment, I beg you to put aside conspiracy theories, thoughts about your elected officials in the state and federal government. Put aside your dislike for masks or social distancing, or maybe you are one of the very few people who actually do like wearing a mask. And just listen for a moment. When you really get down to it, sickness is not the result of some conspiracy. It's a result of sin. Period. It shows us how broken we are. And the help that we need. Have you noticed this virus hasn't just attacked one age group? one gender, one race or another. It affects everyone. Because we're all broken. We're all in need. And we all know it plainly. Life doesn't function very well when you become sick. And when we're sick, we can't do the things that God has given us to do. We can't be who we are called to be no matter what type of sickness. Remember what it was like for you when you were a child, at least it was for me, when one of your parents became sick. The whole house was in chaos, in a way. Nobody was quite sure who was supposed to be doing what. Everything kind of lagged behind for a while. Life in the home didn't function very well when one of my parents got sick. And there is truth to the idea that we really aren't ourselves when we're sick. And I hear that a lot when I go to visit folks in the hospital or those who are in the nursing. 
nursing home or even some of our shut-ins who tell me quite plainly, you know, Pastor, I'm just not myself today. Sickness very clearly shows us we live in a messed up world. I don't think there's any simpler way to put it. Have you noticed what kind of world we live in? And how far we go to avoid any type of sickness. Endless aisles of drugs and medications that have all sorts of different types of vitamins in Walmart and Walgreens. This morning, as I was reading one of my books, I read of this one person who used to take 400 vitamins a day believing that he had come up with the elixir of immortality. He's dead now. We have physical therapy. We have things on the magazine rack when you're standing in the checkout aisle while you're getting groceries, picking those magazines up, taking them home, knowing that maybe, just maybe, if you read the right article in that one magazine, you're finally going to get better. Sometimes we just want to deny it all. Nothing we do can bring an end to the chaos that sickness brings. Like I said about the gentleman that I read about this morning, even though he took 400 vitamins a day, and I have a feeling that may have been part of the reason why he died, sickness still comes. We can't avoid it. Whether it's diabetes, heart disease, or a runny nose, sickness comes to everybody. We're all sinners. We're all broken. And by now on the ability to help ourselves. So what Jesus does that afternoon to Peter's mother-in-law is to restore her humanity. He heals her so that she can be whom God has given her to be. And in this case, was a hostess in Peter's house to serve her son-in-law and his friends and the king. It's exactly what Isaiah prophesied about in chapter 40 that we heard this morning. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God's always been about renewing about fixing what was broken, healing what shattered, mending the torn. And what Jesus did for her, he does for you. He forgives you and heals you of your sins. He lifts you up from the despair that encompasses all of us. Do you doubt this? You struggle to believe these words. But hear this. Christ died for sins. He came for those who are broken and those who are doubting. He came for those that are just now taking their first breath and those that are taking their last. But it's not the end. He lifts us up for a purpose. When Jesus healed the woman, 
he did so and restored her to a place in the family. And so when she was well, she did what God had given her to do, to take care of those that had gathered around her table, including the Lord himself. What about you? What does God heal you from? What has God healed you to do and to be? And make no mistake, God has healed you. He's given you new life. He's forgiven you your sins. And he draws you to his side. And he has great and mighty things for you to do. Oh, don't think about it in that kind of neo-evangelistic understanding. Lest you sit around and wait for your chance to serve as the governor. The truly great things that God has given for you to do are going to look very ordinary and simple. Serving, caring, providing, praying, loving your neighbor in whatever stage of life we're in. But beyond all of that, beyond all of those little things, is this reality. You are God's child. You have a place in this world. A purpose to serve as his instruments. And because of the littlest things that you do in his name, they become something great. St. Paul wrote, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. You are the freest people on earth. You've been free from sin, from death, and the devil. God has freed you to be his child. He's washed you, he's forgiven you, he's preached to you, and he feeds you. He does this only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in you. So you are free now to live in Christ. Serve your neighbor, however it is. Not because you have to, but because you can. For the King has served you in all things. Believe it. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and protect your heart and mind in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. And now let us rise and we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray to the Lord, who has dealt bountifully with us. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, give joy to your servants on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that by your means many would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their course in this life, and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith, 
ready to receive the imperishable wreath of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold might over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land, its produce and industry, and our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Your Son is the great physician of body and soul, at whose hand demon, disease, and every ill effect of sin must turn away. We bring before you those in any need, especially Jackie, Hilda, Tammy, Jennifer, Lillian, Suzanne, Vicki, Peggy, Jeanette, Larry, Jeff, Bob, Paul, Fred, and Roger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy Father, where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Bring us in such faith to your holy sacrament that the blood of Christ which atoned for our sins may make us whole. Strengthen us against every spiritual attack of the devil. Turn us in love toward our neighbor. And preserve us in body and soul to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
mercy on us in giving your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper, you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
find peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
One or two things to remind you about for the upcoming weeks. Of course, next Sunday we'll be having our um, chili meal here at church, or you can take a box to go home for those of you who aren't able to stick around for that. Um, the cost is $7. If you would like to have a box to go and you know beforehand, maybe let Debbie know so that she can start planning some of those things herself. Also, a reminder as well, Ash Wednesday is right around the corner, as you may have saw on the side as you came to church this morning. Um, of course, that means that our Lenten season is here. Next Sunday, we will be burying our Alleluia for the next few weeks uh, until we raise it anew on Easter morning. So we hope to see you throughout this Lenten season as we will be spending some time in the book of Job this year. That will be our theme um, for our sermon series. So hopefully you can come and join us for that. Also, we're looking for a little bit of help um, in cleaning up after the services, taking care of the communion where there is a sign-up sheet down in the doorway for those of you who might be willing to do a little bit of washing. Um, I'm doing all of the setup, so you, it's not like you have to come in on Saturday and do a whole bunch of other things. Um, and I don't think it just has to be the ladies if the gentlemen want to help with that as well. That would be great. Also, you may have also seen it in your bulletin. Um, I'm going to be on the radio again with KFUO this coming Wednesday, I think it is. I guess I didn't look too close. Um, you can tell that most things anymore on the radio are pre-recorded and then played out. Um, but I was able to have a chat with Pastor Apple again for his show on KFUO, which I know we don't get live here, but you can listen to it live on the internet if you go to the KFUO um, webpage. And then if you can't catch it while he's actually broadcasting it, you can listen to it any time later as well. And having done it a couple of times now and listening to a lot of the other ones, they are wonderful conversations. So if you haven't had a chance to tune in and listen to any of them, I would highly you to jump on and take a listen. Any other announcements this morning? Okay. Christ is